A huge book like Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari can't be covered in a book summary, but let's go ahead and run over some awesome concepts from it that you can think about, mole and cogitate over while you're on your treadmill. Let's look at the three revolutions who shaped who we are. Number one, the cognitive revolution. This started 70,000 years ago when Homo sapiens began to start elaborate cultures. Then came along the agricultural revolution 12,000 years ago, and of course the scientific revolution 500 years ago. Now, of course, writes Harari, animals who are much like modern humans first appeared 2.5 million years ago, and these were other species of humans. Let's remind ourselves again that species are grouped together under the heading genus. For example, lions and tigers, are different species under the genus Panthera. So lions would be Panthera leo, for example, and we are Homo sapiens, or wise man. So I guess my house cat is Panthera house cat. <laughs> Humans first evolved in East Africa 2.5 million years ago from an earlier genus of apes called Australopithecus, which means southern ape. These guys migrated to colder and warmer climates in North Africa, Europe, and Asia. Hence, to survive, they evolved in different directions. And then we got different species of Homo, for instance, Homo neanderthalensis, meaning Neanderthals, who were huge and bulky and strong, like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And then we had the Homo erectus, who were super durable and were around for like 2.5 million years. And there are other species too. So the question becomes, why did some species of Homo survive and others die off? Harari says, it takes a tribe to raise a human. Evolution favored those who were capable of forming strong social ties. One advantage and disadvantage of having these big brains is that when we came out of the womb, as we did and, and do, we're highly suggestible. Our brains are like molten glass. That's why we can educate our children to be religious or socialist or warlike or peace-loving or Buddhist. Not that things are stuck like this, but you see what I'm saying when you go on Facebook. You're like, how does that person think that way? When they read the Bible, are they seeing something that I am not? What is going on here? And so we in our big brains, why did they vote for so-and-so? And so we in our big brains jump to the top of the food chain. Usually there's a checks and balances system. Oh, there's too many caribou. Well, let's make more wolves. But there's no creature that can compete with our machine guns out there. So let's face it. This makes us, by the way, extra cruel and vicious. We just got here. And so we have technology, but an apparent lack of empathy for other creatures and people visiting slaughterhouse Tell me what you think. These skills aren't quite as developed as the iPhone in some people. 300,000 years ago, Erectus were using fire, and some scholars believed that this is what inadvertently gave us our big brains because then we could suddenly eat more kinds of food, like wheat. We didn't have to spend all this time chewing on raw food. A single hour suffices. Heck, I can eat in 15 minutes. I'm not joking. Down at the... Uh, food buffet bar at the good food store down the street, our intestines literally became shorter and our brains became bigger. So what happened to these other species? Did we interbreed with them or did we replace them? According to the interbreed theory, if we're having sex with other species of human, which means other animals, can you imagine? Then that means we humans are not purebreds. We're mixtures of sapiens and Neanderthals. So some people don't like to hear this. Um, <laughs> how does that affect our soul? What does this mean? You do the math. Again, Arnold Schwarzenegger, does he look like us? On the other hand, we have the replacement theory, and this means sapiens were so far advanced that there was this huge gulf. I'm not more advanced than anybody, I want to say. Um, I would totally make love to Daryl Hannah and Clan of the Cave Bear. So this speculation, however, ended in 2010 when geneticists discovered that 1-4% to of the unique populations in the Middle East and Europe is Neanderthal DNA. And these other creatures too, we're not purebreds. We come from this whole family. Biology is not black and white. Here's a great passage from Sapiens where Harari writes, what kind of cultures, societies, and political structures would have emerged in a world where several different human species coexisted? How, for example, would religious faiths have unfolded? Would the book of Genesis have declared that Neanderthals descend from Adam and Eve? Would Jesus have died for the sins of the Denisovans? Would Neanderthals have been able to serve in the Roman legions? Uh, would the Declaration of Independence say that all species of the genus Homo are created equal? Would Karl Marx have urged workers of all the species to unite? Weird, right? 
Our lack of brothers and sisters makes us feel like we're alone on this planet. On the other hand, we don't seem to be a big fan of differences, do we? Look at how our cultures treat people of different colors, of different sexual orientations, for example. We can postulate that this is why our ancestors wiped out the Neanderthals. They were too familiar to ignore, but too different to tolerate. Guess what, guys? That's just chapter one. See what I mean? Maybe we'll do more. Thank you so much for joining me today, and feel free to share this video with any of your friends. This book, Sapiens, is a must-read. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and thumbs up button if you haven't already, and please tell me down in the comments below, would you have sex with another species?